Okay, well, in this episode, which we have pre-recorded, full disclosure, full disclosure, we wrap up 2023 and we look forward to 2024 and just a good time. So thank you for being here and thank you for watching. All right, welcome back to the last, am I right about this? The last episode of Tell Me More for 2023. Wow, come on now. We did it. Wow. Have we been hey, it all year? push some buttons. Uh, we'll see if they work. Big cheer. Big cheer. We're supposed to hear a big cheer. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> uh, also, okay. Have we been doing it all year? We've been doing it for like a year and a half. Oh, okay. We started last August, okay. 18 months mm -hmm. ago-ish. But oh. I'll say a year ago, oh. I was nowhere to be found on the First Baptist campus. Right. I was spending every day in the NICU at... Uh, MCA in Medical City, Arlington, because my triplets were there. And so the begin if we're talking about the year in review, the beginning of 2023, January, mm -hmm. I was at home with triplet, newborn triplets. Wow. I remember that. I, I barely as, remember it. Maybe not as vividly as you remember some of it. <laughs> or you may I remember it more. I don't know. I was uh, doing something extremely different than this yeah. in January and February of 2023. Awesome, it was. It These has turned guys, out awesome. Jack, Ben, and Sam, yes. ladies and gentlemen. And we, I, I t tossed to our friends here in the studio, Luke and Dr. Wiles, that maybe we could do more of a personal year in mm -hmm. review, mm -hmm. and then we'll get to the 20, not long. This, By the way, this is not. This is going to be a shorter Lighter. We're going to try to make it a shorter, lighter episode. I am declaring and prophesying <laughs> it's going to be a shorter, lighter than last week's, heavier, and uh, it was like swimming through syrup in a good way. Yes. Every once in a while, you got to yes. you got to go deep. But uh, this one, a little more. It's a year in review. Merry mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, we've done it together. But so I wanted to ask y'all when you think about 2023 in your mm. own life, is there wow. a dominant word, scene? Mm -hmm. Phrase, what, where, what has God been to you? Mm -hmm. Or even the fun scene of your family life. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you could go a lot of different ways with mm -hmm. that. But what stands out? Mm. Well. Mm. <laughs> 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 well, I would, I would say for us, for me, it's probably a couple of things. One, it's been a, it's been a challenging year for us, for our family. Um, as most of our, at least our church members know, um, in May, our daughter was diagnosed with breast cancer, 36 years old. And so that kind mm. of has colored, if you will, most yes. everything that's happened. I think it would be Just, odd if that wasn't yeah, kind of that's really been the, mentioned in this. Trying yeah. to been the been the issue for us and then trying to navigate through that season with her, with her family. And um, But um, I would also say we have seen a, the hand of God in our lives in tangible ways and how he has protected Hannah and but also we've seen the um beauty of the church this church has just cared for our family and in, in so many ways praying for us but also just doing tangible things to help us with with all of the responsibilities we've had to to bear during all that so yeah we've been we've been blessed in the midst of a really hard season um but i would also say we've we have seen um, just our family as it's as it's grown now, <laughs> you know. Now that Josiah's little boy Gideon is getting a little older, to where he's, you know, his personality is definitely on display, mm -hmm. and and he's gotten very attached to his puppy, which oh, I'm, I'm which very, you love, like, oh, right? I love that, yeah. <laughs> and so um, we've we've had a, I would say it's been a year of deep blessing for us in mm -hmm. the midst of of pretty serious challenge, probably what I'd say. And mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for it. grateful for the church, grateful for the Lord, what He's done for us. Also grateful for um, the people in the medical community, kind of like you, Katie, just just some really gifted people that have been instruments of healing in our daughter's life in ways that we would have never experienced or known about. So, and and she's doing well now. We're grateful for that. So, mm. it's been an interesting mm. year for us, just personally. <clears throat> yeah, mm. Kurt, you had a curveball, didn't you? It was, yeah. You know, Hannah was getting ready to buy a new house, getting ready to move back into. Uh, she grew up in Interlochen. That's where we lived for fifteen years, I guess, when she was younger. And uh, she kind of wanted to be back there, and so all excited, signed a deal on a house on a. I think it was on a Friday, and uh, and then like the following Tuesday, got the news about cancer. So mm -hmm. it just kind of 
just really um, mm. threw a wrench into everything for her. Yeah. Um, but, but um, you know, we're hopeful. So yeah. I'm grateful. So. Mm. Hope and gratitude mm-hmm. are good things. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Look, what about you? You you moved here 18 months ago. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have hit that one year anniversary mark at the church. There are just a handful of people who go to church here. Uh, <laughs> so getting to know, getting everybody, to know everybody just takes, oh, I thought you were going to say. Uh, just takes a yeah. little bit of time. You're yep. still, yeah, you're still getting your, I mean, yeah, I still, I, I still meet I'm new people still, who, you know. I still learn every, I every week new. who's related. You know yes. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So sorry to make myth about me. I have a secret family tree document that yeah. I've been mapping you all out. <laughs> no, that's not true. But I do. T- I, it's been, I and we've had several new staff, so it's been nice to be able to go like, oh, by the way, that's, this oh, is who this person is. So that is. now you're not the newest I'm person. I'm not the newest person yeah. anymore, which is great. Go. There you go. Um, <laughs> what about your little family? Yeah. You, you have a beautiful family. We had a wonder, 10 year wonderful anniversary, wife. Which was no so fun. way. We took I know our I knew first that. But... trip without children. Whoa. Since having children. Look at you. I have a seven year old now and a four year old now. So <laughs> how about that? And they're blooming they're blooming Saturday. into lovely little they girls. Are. They are, they're they fun. Really are. Yes. So did you was the birthday party themed? Sparkly seven year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. They're so. both sparkly. <laughs> they are. They're okay, both when sparkly. you think about this year with your family, any certain story, scene, oh, moment? They're just funny kids. Uh, we mm-hmm. get, yeah, we got a new dog. That's been fun. Which is crazy. so much better than a new cat, but go ahead. <laughs> I love my cat. Mm, both have their uh, own trouble. So <laughs> hmm, scenes with my family, you know, it was really nice. Kelsey and I took our 10 year trip to Savannah, Georgia. It was just nice to walk around. Mm. What a great town too, by the way. Ate great food. It was oh, fun. We had a great food time. food there so good. I've not been. Um, Got a statue of John Wesley right in the town. I took a picture of it and sent it to you when I <laughs> ran across it. Um, yeah, but it's just been fun to watch the girls grow, watch them settle into friendships, and it's just the emergence of their personalities. Yeah. Kelsey and I realized the birthday party we threw for Evelyn, our oldest, was her first birthday party with friends, which is just one of those weird phenomenon of like we raised a child yeah. through a pandemic. Um, uh, yeah. And so, yeah. so in some ways that, they're yeah. kind of getting yeah. into their own, right? Mm-hmm. Just in terms of society, not yeah. the, not in their age, not only yeah. their age, but their, their lot, their it? place. So, it was great. It was, it was fun. Mm-hmm. It was sweet. Mm-hmm. It's fun to just have seen her relationships develop. Kelsey's settled into her second year of teaching at mm-hmm. JB Little. Mm-hmm. Go little they're, rascals. They're lucky to have her. <laughs> little rascals, is that what they are? Yes. I knew I think I knew they were the rascals. I don't think I ever said it together. Speaking of we talked about mascots last week, but here we go. <laughs> little rascals. That's a pretty good one. It is. Have to, yeah, yeah, good job, I, I whoever did that I don't along know, the way. But, uh, it's fun. It's not as good as the I task of Wampus Cats. That's one of my all time favorites. Wampus yeah, cats. Yeah. Mm. So again, we can talk high school mascots. <laughs> I've got some weird ones coming from Missouri. But that's another uh, that's maybe. another podcast. Mm. Yeah, and we'll have that one. For sure. Of course. So just hold on to your, yeah. you know. Hold on to your scissors. <laughs> scissors. We watched Jurassic Park this weekend, a little bit of it, in which um, I think it's Samuel L. Jackson's character. He just says, hold on to your butts. <laughs> yeah. It's a um, great line I've used uh, throughout my life. I've never even seen Jurassic Park. Stop it. I haven't. No way. Oh, I really in 2024. Dr. Dennis Wilde, stop the Bill video. Jurassic Park. Yeah, I've never <laughs> seen it. I'm sorry. Okay. How, Katie, your kids were... Your recap. Okay. My recap was that I've seen Jurassic Park. I've watched Jurassic Park this year. And that's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, no, but your Jesus, kids... Not Ryan. Your not kids Trimble. came of age. Uh, yeah. I mean, your kids are my age. I know. And I, I and we watched it all the time. Yeah. I'm, I, I know they did. I've just never seen it. <gasps> The first one is a classic. Anything that came after is kind of like, eh. It's trash. Yeah. <laughs> but the first one, it, it holds up. I mean, it, yeah. you know, for the graphics and the just the technology, yeah. the CGI, whatever. So I mean, if it you're was, looking for a Christmas movie to watch, everybody. Whoa. It's Jurassic Park. <laughs> it is, just like it I've, is never seen, I've never seen one episode of Survivor. Well, that's, to me, as far as like cultural, yeah. I'm fine I with that. I've seen it on TV. A lot of people watch it. I just never saw it. I've never, but I've never seen Jurassic Park. We Pers- have to watch it. Personally, in terms of personal offense, <laughs> I'm more offended by Jurassic Park and Sorry. less offended by okay. the Survivor. Okay, so, so this, year, year's so this year in my new life, I had tr- a New Year's resolution. Thank you. I love that so much. I had triplets. I mean, I had them in 20, they 2022. Yeah. They came home. Yeah, yeah. So Sam came home January or December 30th, I think. That's right. Mm-hmm. And two days later, three days later, 
Ben and Jack joined him. So they came. So January 2nd, mm-hmm. 2023, mm-hmm. my family came home from the hospital, mm-hmm. which is, I think, will always be the craziest day of my life. Because mm-hmm. you're like, what are we right. supposed to do? Because at that point, Dr. Wise, you came by, and I remember this moment. I mean, not that day, but uh-huh. maybe the next day, and you and Cindy came by, and I was like, yeah, there's still three weeks from their due date. Yeah. They were six weeks old and right. still three weeks from I remember. when they were supposed to be due. So it's like, here's this five-pound baby. I Sam know. was so small. I know. And so I just, handed him back to Katie, and I said, we need to take him back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we need to put him back in the incubator thing. And then you think while. about, you know, so fast forward <laughs> through it all to like last night, we came to the adventure. Wow. And their um, full personality they and sharing cookies cute. with me and Ryan and... We did not ride the donkeys because uh, they Next can't year. really yeah. do that. But we did sit them on top of the petting zoo yeah. goats. That's awesome. So they are, have these have pictures of them totally disinterested and not really even sitting, <laughs> just like hanging over <laughs> goats. But, you know, uh, so I'll say our dominant emotion or feeling or word for this year has just been gratitude, mm-hmm. particularly to the church. Our families have been amazing. I think I thought our families would be amazing. We've, mm-hmm. We just have great supportive mm-hmm. families. But the church has really shown up. And I think that's a First Baptist distinctive. Mm-hmm. If there's a felt need, then they can recognize it and understand how to address it, mm-hmm. which hopefully we can help them do in, mm-hmm. in more philosophical ways. But something mm-hmm. like, we have triplets and we need help. Mm-hmm. They came out of the woodworks. I mean, I made new friendships of these kind of young grandmas or just people who had never been in our home before, but were like, mm-hmm. we like babies and mm-hmm. you need help. Mm-hmm. And so our tiny little house was just... I mean, yeah. we were starting to like apologize to our neighbors for the amount of cars in front of their house <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And so and we moved this summer, which moving with triplets was like, we're not going to do that. But we did because our people were like, we will help. We will come help you pack boxes. We'll help mm-hmm. watch the boys. And they did. You know, it's not just saying they do it. They did it. And so, I mean, I could I could get into a lot of very specific and then just broad. We feel very loved by the mm-hmm. church. But mm-hmm. grateful to God for the health of our boys, right? Mm-hmm. Triplet pregnancies are really high risk. And right. so the fact that they're developmentally where they should be, mm-hmm. health-wise, mm-hmm. nothing. I mean, the worst mm-hmm. is like one of them might have asthma, which obviously is significant, but in the grand scheme, mm-hmm. like healthy mm-hmm. yeah. and so cute. And cuties. So that, that's that been my year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we could talk about the church, and I want to talk about the, the preaching and the sermons, which is what mm-hmm. this podcast is about, but our church in general, so much mm-hmm. new life. Mm-hmm. Coming in yeah, and finding its way, yeah, both on staff and just mm-hmm. the there's shepherds. a... Um, yeah, there's a newness and a freshness in the air, and I'm I'm just trying to mm-hmm. keep up and play mm-hmm. my role. You know, I've been here eight years now, so I I'm not the new person anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's a different seat to sit. I'm in, not the you new know? person anymore. You, could, I mean, since you, we've had a whole swath <laughs> right. of new uh, good, mm-hmm. and 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 some yeah. of what we've seen at yeah. Christmas has been reflective of that newness and freshness that we've yes. just been through with some. New ways of doing things that we haven't done before, or things we haven't done before, but then new yeah. ways of doing some things we have done. It's, it was really refreshing, I thought. Yes, both last night at the adventure and Luke. Which, even, by the way, your, yeah. we pre recorded this episode. Oh, I, I, I broke the. You did. You okay. broke the. So okay. I, I was, we, we were doing we so were well. We were more worried suspending. about not being able to film an episode for you next week. So yeah, we went next, ahead. Well, a week from today is Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. None of us will be here, That's but right. we care about our audience. That's right. And we wanted to support y'all. Yep. Not so. leave you hanging. But I did run it. Uh, yeah, today's Monday the 18th. Yes. I'm sorry. So, But it's been a great year. But last night was adventure. It was. It and was a week awesome. before that. It's all down the line. Luke, you, you, and, you, and that's the first time that, Luke, because you, you inherited kind of, we want to do something in the parade. Right. And we but tried you, to do a float, and it got stormed out the year before. Yeah, <laughs> floats aren't bad, and we may do floats again. So it's not against yeah. the float, but you're like, yeah. how do we capture the people that are here? Yeah. Not just in kind of advertisement right. or, or name that's recognition great. as we go by, but how do we actually... Yeah. engage and talk mm-hmm. to people so you know just there's so much newness and creativity yeah, and I feel grateful to be on this church staff as well and even looking at yeah. cards from adventure last night we're able to actually recognize some of those people that we never met before who showed up for holiday on the lawn came to adventure last night there and so go. it's encouraging yeah, to see that it's a little bit of validation right yeah, that coming. our efforts Absolutely. are in the right great. direction so yeah, there's, um, a lot, there's just a lot to celebrate mm-hmm. at first service wellington so mm-hmm. okay should we talk about the year in preaching, which is what this sermon's about? So, Why does it matter? Tell us more. <laughs> Dot org. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> which currently is set up to help For people Christmas. help people That's know right. the joy That's and right. story of Christmas. So. But it'll, it'll morph through the year. That's what we'll try to do with it. Yeah, yeah. it's good. We own mm-hmm. it. Let's pack, like populate it, it with so good content. Think oh. to just about a year ago, January, mm-hmm. we kicked off the year's theme, Why Does It Matter? Why mm-hmm. does it matter? And we talked about... Why does anything matter? You know, what is what is the ultimate reality, you know, and mm. and creation. That's where we really we began with the God who stands behind creation. And so 
our when you look at our um, uh, the things that we say that we believe, we took the Baptist faith and message from 1963, which is kind of our core theological statement as a church. That's what we say in our constitution. It most um, closely reflects what we believe. And we took the articles of the Baptist faith and message and tried to put them in more accessible language, if you will. And so that confessional um, um, reduction, I guess you could say, begins with everything starts with God. Mm. And that's kind of how we mm. started the year. The reason anything matters is because of who God is, what God has chosen to do, mm. the acts of creation and how yeah. he has created humanity and put purpose in the universe. And so the whole idea is that we believe that everything is purposeful, intrinsically has value mm. because it has God's fingerprints all over it. And so every human being you meet has dignity and intrinsic value no matter who they are because they bear the image of God and all of creation matters because it's God's creation. And it's, it's like, it's like his signature is written across the canvas of it. You know, this belongs to him. It's a mm -hmm. reflection of his will it would not be were it not for him. So, so that's where we started just this whole idea of, and, and, and of why anything matters, because I think that's a conversation in our culture. Mm -hmm. well, why does it matter? You know, why does, why does this matter? You know, because we have so many things we talk about in our culture and to me, the core question is, well, why does it matter? Why do you mm -hmm. have convictions about any of this? So that's where we started was with that. And then mm -hmm. we moved into Easter season to talk about sin. You know, in other words, why do we need redemption? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> sin matters. Sin matters. Yeah. And it's real. And, and, re it's, and framing that uh, in the right way yes, and help and people a, understand in a, it. In right? a way, yeah, that you can have the conversation. Because I would say at the, the heart of the year is this idea that we wanted our people to be more skilled in apologetics. And the word apology means to defend, to give an answer. And, and it comes from a Greek word. And so we wanted to help our folks um, more effectively articulate their faith to this culture, particularly around the things that matter. That's been the focus for the entire year. Mm -hmm. Just be evangelistically sensitive, but do it in a way where apologetics is just a kind of a part of who you are as a Christian, mm -hmm. realizing that we're in a culture that doesn't embrace what we believe for the most part. They do kind of on the surface. It's kind of a generic feel, if you will. Um, Cindy and I were just most recently, um, we were in Canada for some mission meetings, and we were talking to these Canadian Baptist leaders, and we just asked them, you know, you several of them had spent some time in the U.S., it's kind of fascinating to be in Canada because Canada is just right next door to us and everybody speaks English mm. and they drive on the left side of the road and they, they're, 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 uh, we were in the hotel the night before and you can turn on ESPN and watch American sports, and, but you're in another country. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and when you listen to them, it's just so radically different. In the U.S., and so we asked, Their church "Tell landscape. us about it. Tell yeah. us what what it's like." And one of them said to us, "Well, to, just to give you a snapshot, in Canada, if a Canadian um, politician were to end their speech with 'God bless Canada' or you know have any kind of reference, well, they would automatically be discounted <laughs> as a legitimate candidate." And they said, "And we watch y'all's political." <laughs> conversations and everybody ends it with God bless America. Mm -hmm. So there's this veneer, there's this um, civil religion kind of, if you will, mm -hmm. but it's become so much more pluralistic over time. Yeah. And so one of the goals this year is for our people to help our people live in that cultural environment. It's not Canada. I get it. But it's also not 19, whatever, mm -hmm. pick a date. So we America. can learn something from the Canadians. Yeah, we can because it's just yeah. different. And mm -hmm. so how do we articulate what we believe? Well, why does anything matter? Why does sin matter? To, to be able to engage people in that conversation. And then family. We move from there to the family. Why does the family matter? Well, we all know that family definitions, if you will, um, the lines have been blurred a little bit. You know, what is a family now in the U.S.? What does that mean to people? And, and why are there laws about families? You know, why, why, why does mm -hmm. that even matter? Mm -hmm. why, why do we allow the government to dictate that to us? You know, I mean, like if... And I live in Texas. Okay, Texas is a community property state legally. Well, what that means is if you're married in Texas, you know, then everything is shared mm -hmm. in half, mm -hmm. you know. 
that uh, that original idea, if I'm if I understand it correctly from a legal perspective, was designed to protect women. Mm. You know, so in other words, historically, yeah. a man's a man working, divorced, a woman's yeah. not get a divorce. Well, guess what? The man could take everything. It's his house. It's his mm-hmm. car. His job. Well, not in Texas. It's y'all's <laughs> in Texas, and so it's a uh, if you start a business. In Texas, and you're married. Well, guess what? It belongs to your spouse. That's just how it works. I'm half and half. Yep. And well, think about that. My but, mother threatened that to my my mother-in-law. Excuse me, who's a lawyer? Yeah. Threatened that because I owned our home before we got married. Yeah. And she was like, Ryan, if y'all get divorced, or she told me, Katie, if you ever divorce him, he's going to take half of your house. It was like a warning to me. She yeah. was like looking out for me <laughs> if I divorced her husband. Yeah. Anyway, That's a good mother-in-law. <laughs> she's great. Her, yeah. Her yeah. son. You mean divorce her son? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if I divorce, she's like, Katie, you're going to, yeah. you marry this guy. He's well, got half your stuff. So think you know? about that. Legally, in the U.S., we have said that our government has jurisdiction over families. I mean, I mean we've, Hannah adopted her two older sons. We went through a legal custody mm-hmm. battle very in binding. courts. Yes, right. very hard. And finally, you get to the end of it to where a judge says, these are your children now, you know. And I'll never forget, he looked at Hannah and he said, you will have a harder time, if you ever have a child, you'll have a harder time uh, getting rid of your rights to that child you birth than these two boys right here because what you are now their forever mom. Um, so so what, what does family matter? How do, how do we address that as Christians? What does the Bible say about it? So we had that conversation to yeah. for us to be thoughtful about the role of marriage and, and parenting. What do, what do we really believe about it? Yeah, what about yeah. it? Let's think about it. And um, then Good. we moved to eternity, and um, mm. you know, why does eternity matter? And um, you know, the whole idea. You know, I, I, I was thinking. I've been just really praying about evangelism right now. And just what, how do you talk to people? And um, mm-hmm. so I was, I was reading um, this uh, book last night about evangelism. I mentioned it to you, Luke. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions that this author says that he likes to ask people is, so where do you think you'll be 100 years from now? You know, <laughs> well, mm-hmm. who thinks about that? And he just said, well, maybe nobody, but, yeah, but just wonder. Of, it's kind of a different way to frame. Yeah, just wonder, where, where do you think you'll be 100 years from now? Or you could even start by saying, who do you think will own your house 100 years from now? I wonder what that'll be like. Well, mm-hmm. where do you think you'll be? <laughs> well, actually, at some point, everybody thinks about it at some level. Um what do they really believe about it? Well, what is, why does eternity matter? Um, and then we looked in, uh, in August at why does uh, the Holy Spirit, the whole spiritual realm, why does it matter? You, again, using John's gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the mm-hmm. fall, why does the church matter? Another conversation to me, because we live in an era where people have such, um, I don't know, they have hard... They have harsh views about Christianity in the church. I think you know it's it's irrelevant or it's outdated um, or, or corrupt. I, I, I mean, yeah, part of that it's messed it's up. Just a distrust, yeah. yeah. Or even it's angry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it just seems like they're always angry all the time, and so it's really created some barriers. That I, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to fantasize about my growing up life and all that because I grew up in the civil rights era. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I grew each up era has its own. Absolutely, yeah, there problem. were riots, and my goodness, Martin Luther King was leading m- marches, and I, I happened to be fortunate to be raised by by you know my parents. My dad was not a prejudiced person, and so that was you know live, growing up in Alabama. <laughs> you know, mm. think about a white. Dad, who grew up in Georgia, mm-hmm. who who somehow uh-huh, wanted to make sure we believed and knew that everybody was created equal. Um, so I had Don't a little me. bit of an advantage, Grant, but I still I grew up awash in a culture. So I don't want to fantasize and act like, man, it was awesome back then. But there were things about the culture back then that just weren't barriers today. You know, you just you know you you the church was had a welcome seat at every table in the South in those days. You know, um, we've talked about this kind of stuff before. You know, we I played all three sports in high school. Well, you didn't have practice on Wednesday nights. And I'm, I'm at a 4A high school. You know, we're competing at the highest level. And every Wednesday at 430, our coaches, no matter what sports you're playing, you all left because you all went to youth group. It, it mm-hmm. didn't matter if you were. <laughs> yeah. If you're in Birmingham, Alabama, you went to church on Wednesday night, you know. And I can promise you, no games were played on Sunday. You, you, you could Nothing not on have Sunday. played a game on Sunday. Yeah. You know, um, so think about how, and and it was almost like a respect. Even if you didn't go to church, if it wasn't it was a part of your life, yeah, you just respected it. it. Was all it was. It was all fine. I could even I could even mm-hmm. take my um, 
we would get a perfect attendance uh, certificate from Sunday school. And my brothers and I, we would take that to our school and you got 10 points added to your conduct grade at our elementary school because you went to church every Sunday for a quarter. Okay. It's a little different. It's a not little different that. now. Well, now we're at a place where there's, um, um, I don't know, would y'all say antagonism, um, anxiety? Um, Apathy. Yeah, and maybe even antipathy. Is that right? Um, mm. When it comes to the church. So why does the church matter? So we talked about that in the, um, you know, in the fall. We talked about uh, missions. Why does religion matter? Why do we take this gospel to other places? Do we believe in it that yeah. much? Do we believe it's really that imperative? And, you know, you look at the Great Commission, and, I mean, it's right there in front of you. It's, it's Jesus keeps using the word all. All authority has been given to me. Mm. Take this to all the nations. Teach them all that I have shown you, and I will always be with you. I mean, <laughs> it speaks pretty comprehensively. And yeah, then we it. just come through the... Advent with the Incarnation, you know, kind of the core teaching, if you will, of Christianity, what distinguishes us. So, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a great year for me, theologically, I would say, from a, from a preaching point of view. Mm -hmm. It has challenged me to truly think through um, what I believe about all these things and how to communicate it to the church in such a way that I hope one of my hopes would be that we're all better apologists hmm. than we were in January that we're equipped with more, um, at least more information and more accessible language to try to explain some of the things that we believe. So I that's what I hope has happened. And I think in communication in general, to, to, um, to address a question that's in someone's mind makes a more pointed mm -hmm. sermon, it makes a more pointed conversation point. Mm -hmm. So imagining that the congregation is asking something like, mm -hmm. why does any of this matter, you know, mm -hmm. fill in the blank, mm -hmm. I think allows you to address more specific and, and pointed answers mm -hmm. rather than just saying, I'm going to teach you about right. fill in the blank. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just yeah. the, the idea to me, like even when I was, when I preached and filled in free this mm -hmm. year, once or twice, it's to just cast that kind of imagine that these people are really grappling with mm -hmm. and thinking through mm -hmm. why does it matter that Jesus came right. in the form of a baby? Mm -hmm. Why does it matter what we believe on family? Why mm -hmm. does it matter if the church exists or not, you know, and then it really it creates a more layered and conversational mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. series of preaching. I don't know. It could. I think it did. I mean, mm -hmm. that was our hope for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I hope it was accomplished. So. Um, I sense in our church at Luke, your, your role not to be diminished in this, uh, a turn toward just engaging the people around us with the truths mm -hmm. of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your itch, Dr. Wiles, to mm -hmm. be able to converse with our neighbors mm -hmm. and our coworkers mm -hmm. and our you know, the parents in our classrooms mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. about what we really believe and why we think mm -hmm. it changes our whole life and change the mm -hmm. world. And mm -hmm. I think we'll see more of that in 2024 as we all kind of mm -hmm. hit stride with table groups and, and, mm -hmm. and not just table groups, but that kind it's of DNA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Infusing just what we're doing. And so I think the, from my seat on this little podcast, I think the, why does it matter trajectory is felt mm -hmm. and was accomplished. Mm -hmm. Not that we're done, but the sense of stirring that, evangelical sensitivity yep. in our people mm -hmm. that church is not just not just to come and adore Jesus mm -hmm. but to help others know him as well you know mm -hmm. I so would say amen. that's that's, that's my amen. Hope. That's where, my big where are we going <gasps> well boop, 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 so, doop, doop, doop. you know next year yeah next year I just I I've been praying about it and thinking about it as y'all know and coming out of covid I just wanted us to be more um more deeply connected together. Mm -hmm. And so together will be our theme for Love 2024. It. And we're going to celebrate the diversity of who we are and the beauty of the ability of the Holy Spirit to create unity amidst the diversity of the church family and the diverse gifts that are I operating. I am here for it. I'm excited. And I'm looking forward to it. I am too. I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. so, so. We could talk a lot more about it, but you know what? We got a whole year too. We, we do. We got a whole year. We got a whole year. Too. Thank you, 2023. Looking forward to 2024. We are. Yes. So, and, and thank you know. if you are a faithful Tell Me More listener, or mm -hmm. if you just started, or we. If you made it to this song in this podcast, right. we yeah. say thank you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Enjoy we'll see you your in the new Christmas. Year. Enjoy your new yes, year. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you. Soon. See you. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next year. Bye.
Thanks for listening to the Tell Me More podcast today. You can subscribe to this podcast on your app of choice, or you can visit us at fbca.org to find out more information about the podcast and our church. Thanks for listening. Have a good day.